This video is once again sponsored by One Football, so a footballing app that gives you news, results, fixtures, all that sort of stuff about chosen teams that you know you, you can designate when you actually get the app yourself. As I mentioned, this video is sponsored by them, so go and check out the link in the description below, and you can download the app on either the App Store or on Android. So, hello there, everyone, and welcome. It is Niran here, and today it is time for me to welcome you to episode, I think, number 20 now of this Wimbledon Road to Glory here on FIFA 18 career mode. And as you may have just seen sneakily down at the bottom here, we are in our championship campaign and we are doing pretty damn well in it. Now, last episode, obviously, if you haven't seen that one, go and check it out. There'll be a link in the top right of the screen for you to go and check out that video and also the playlist. But yeah, last episode, we found things probably a little bit more easy than they should have been. So I have changed up the sliders. I've tested them and I've made things a little bit more difficult. It also should definitely be a lot more entertaining and end-to-end -end in terms of the actual gameplay. Anyway, this episode should now see us all the way through to the January transfer window. I don't think we will actually be engaging in the transfer window in this episode. This will just be the precursor for it. So you can see here in November we've got Aston Villa and Birmingham, so both sides there from the West Midland City, and then Hull, Brighton, Brentford, Watford, Scunthorpe, and Fulham. Now if you cast your mind back to last episode, then you might remember one of the greatest defensive performances in this channel's history. From this man here, added a Josh Larger, and that is why he was the player of the episode from last time, which means he'll be playing every single game of this one. And I cannot stress enough how unbelievable he was in that episode. It was, I've never seen the likes from a defender. I remember Linus Valkvist back in whole career mode. Um, pocketing Cristiano Ronaldo was well up there, but across an actual entire episode, it was unbelievable from Adi De Josh Alarja, so he very deservedly gets that one. Anyway, no messing around in this episode. It's time for the first game of it, and we're away from home against Aston Villa at Villa Park. You can see the side in the background there. The main real changes are that Joe Pickett and Aaron Bolger are in. Lyle Taylor's been very hit and miss recently, and Bolger wanted to start this game, so he comes in for McTominay. So this is the game that I tested the new slider setting on, and uh, I think we had one game where we had three goals, and another where we had four and then and, and, uh, but both games there could have definitely been at least six so Jedinak into Samir and back to the Australian again that was a good little through ball into Adoma and now Grealish what a ball there into El Ghazi who hits the post there oh my word all right let's flip in calm down a little bit Aston Villa mate are you all right do you want to just chill out for a second Bolger Barnes that's now through to Azora who goes for the shot and it is saved by Bun reverse there into Grealish oh man over here that is Albert Adoma, but the shot is straight at Christian Walton. Azoro through there towards Piggott. Azoro's carried on running through. This is Joel Azoro saved by Bunn at the near post. Wasn't the greatest of passes in fairness from Piggott. Sort of sent him a little bit too far wide. Kodja there into El Ghazi who's got away from Oshalaja. Still El Ghazi over to Adoma and what a miss from Albert Adoma. Wow, wow, wow. We've been let off the hook there again by the left midfielder. That is a shocker of a miss. Villa will be disappointed if they don't go in at half time in the lead and they will be very disappointed if they go in behind but this is Harvey Barnes looking to try and do that and the shot is saved at the near post by Bunn. This though is Harvey Barnes trying to make things happen. Dale Fry, Florence, that's through to Joe Piggott. Oh, Joe Piggott! Oh my goodness me! You can't do that, fam! That is insane! Joe Piggott has just scored a back heel goal! That is disgusting! No way! What in the world? You physically cannot do that! That's illegal! Villa have been violated! Florence through to Piggott! He's back heeled it! don't believe that. Do not wipe your eyes. Do not clean out your ears. You are genuinely hearing and seeing that information occur. That is one of the best moments of this entire series. That has got to be one of the most unlikely things to ever happen. Adoma swung it in. That's to Kodja and Aston Villa have equalised. The back heel means nothing now because Villa have come up the other end and scored themselves. It's a wonder ball in from Adoma. Kodra has got there and uh, they are now level of Villa right on the edge of half time, which is so disappointing. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a good sign. This. I know it, well, it's bad because we've obviously conceded, but we've actually got a bit of entertainment. We've had two goals in a half of football. 
ladies and gentlemen. Dozel Bolger, who's got a run being made outside. That is Harvey Barnes. It's through to Harvey Barnes, and he should have scored there. Good save from Bunn. Kogia Lansbury. Good flick there from Grealish. Oshalaja, though, deals with it. And then McTominay into De Silva Lopez. Right, counter-attack opportunity here. Taylor, not the best back heel, but Dozel will find... Uh, Azoro out wide here. Joel Azoro cuts inside. Still Joel Azoro, and that is an unreal save. I really don't know how, how he's actually managed to save that. For a similar position actually to our first goal, and it's found Azoro who hits the post. The near post there. He's got the ball back, swings it to the back stick for Oshalaja, and Oshalaja scores. Yes, my boy, with nine minutes to go, Ade Deji Oshalaja scores, I think his first goal of this save. He stayed up for the corner. Azoro hit the post, got the ball back, put it to the back stick, and Oshalaja has headed it across goal. Fresh off the back of getting player of the episode and the captaincy of the side. And we've got eight minutes now to hold on to this lead. Tommy Elphick. Over again, Lansbury, Adoma, ball in, headed away though by Florence, that might just do it, and indeed it does. We have won here, away from home against Aston Villa, 2-1. See, man of the match, interestingly enough, was actually Florence. Uh, he, I think he actually got the assist for the first goal, I think he was the one to actually pass the ball into Joe Piggott to then finish spectacularly. So I, I guess I understand, but maybe Oshalaja should have got it based on the fact that he got the goal that won the game. We're going to sim game number two of this one. We're at home against Birmingham for it. We just travelled to Birmingham to face Aston Villa, but now we are facing their city rivals at home in this one. We just went four points clear at the top of the table, so I'm really hoping the slider setup does make things more difficult because we really need it. We shouldn't be winning the league, in my opinion, or certainly not easily anyway. Uh, Vassell again, Birmingham the lead, but McTominay equalised two minutes later, so it's 1-1 at half-time. Our good friend Shea Adams has just come off the bench. Now, interestingly, Joel Azoro has just picked up an injury after 62 minutes and then been brought off. We get a draw, we get one point, that's that's fine, but it might well be that injury to Joel Azoro, which is the big talking point out of that one. Thankfully, though, it is not. Only a three-day injury for him. I know it wouldn't be, well, it shouldn't have been absolutely horrendous because it didn't come off straight away. Game number two now, we're away from home against Hull. Well, I say game number two, played game number two, actual game. Game number three. Hull City again, yet another side that should prove to be very difficult to play against. Obviously, I've got really fond memories of this Hull side. They're very different in comparison to the one that I would have used in the FIFA 17 career mode. We're back to the Lyle Taylor Joel Azoro partnership, so hopefully, we'll see some magnetism between those two again. Soko there fires that one into Dozel around the corner for Azoro. Wanted a little bit too much time on the ball. He might still be a little bit, I don't know, just uh, not, not stiff or anything, but just a little bit feeling it after that uh, little injury that he got in the sim against Birmingham. So we'll cut him some slack if he is a little bit slow to start. Now, Dozel, oh, good challenge there from Hector, but McTominay. Takes the ball once again, then plays it through to Joel Azoro, who slots it between the goalkeeper's legs. Cool as you like from Joel Azoro to give us the lead here. 1-0 inside 12 minutes. Really well done, actually, from McTominay to steal the ball after the challenge came in on Dozel. Keeper probably should have done better with that one, really. It's, I suppose it's gone through his legs. There's not too much he could do. I said he might be a little bit slow to start in this one. Clearly, absolutely not. Well, yeah, that's a really good ball, actually, into Nua Dicko out wide. For Kim. Now back to Nuadiko again, and Roy Carroll, thankfully, is there to receive the ball. It was pretty much straight at him, but some good play from Hull. Hector there brought down off the ball. Dicko with the long shot again, and a brilliant save. Roy Carroll, really, really good stop there. Dozel out wide here to De Silva Lopez. Lyle Taylor down the line. That's through to Andre Dozel. Back into Lyle Taylor again. What a goal. So, so well worked here from Wimbledon. And we have got another one. 2 0 inside 30. 36 minutes now. Lyle Taylor getting the ball into Dozel there, who just waits and waits and waits. Well, Lyle Taylor runs onto it and blasts it into that bottom corner. Swung in here now by De Silva Lopez. That's towards Scott McTominay. Oh, Shalaja, though, has done it again. You wait 20 episodes for an Ade Deji Oshalaja goal, and he scores 2 in 2. It's 3 0 here at the KCOM, and Ade Deji Oshalaja has scored his second of the day. Another header, this time directly from the corner, leaping above everyone, including Scott McTominay and Kevin Stewart. Captain Fantastic. This guy was born 
to lead this side. I swear to God, it's literally, since we've made him captain, he's actually turned into Superman. Here comes Kim for Hull, Weir, Abel Hernandez trying to play that one through for Grzycki. Bit of a defensive mix-up, but the pole shot, thankfully, was uh, really wild, actually. Still Hernandez, Toko, though, does well enough. Barnes, though, with a slide tackle. Oshelaja blocks. Carroll can only punch. Nosha Larger deals with it on the rebound. Oh, lovely bit of skill there from Roy McKenzie. This now is Andre Dozell, and it's just wide. Very, very close to a spectacular fourth. Oh, Dozell's given that away again in a dangerous position. Toko there coming across and fouling Kashia. Oh, and then Kim goes down in the area once again. A stupid stand tackle. This time from Darius Charles. We've seen that so many times. Roy Carroll, well, if he wants to keep hold of his clean sheet, he needs to... Save this one, and he actually has it. Falls back to Grozitski, and the double save comes from Roy Carroll. Even at 41, he's still pulling out the stops. Double save. It really has not been Hall's day. Visser, can we get it over to Harvey Barnes? Indeed, we can. Harvey Barnes, saved by Marshall. Lyle Taylor was trying to get there on the rebound. Could have been 4-0 right at the end, but obviously Hall could have scored their penalty. In the end, it's only three goals, but three points for ourselves. So as you can see, man of the match was interesting enough, Scott McTominay. He did get an assist in that game, in fairness, and I do remember him being very solid in midfield. Uh, the other goals obviously scored uh, by Azoro, Lyle Taylor and Oshelaja. Worth a note as well, Roy Carroll grabbing, you know, saving that penalty. It's worth noting for a second time, Dean Parrott did not get sent off, so I don't know why it's suggesting that he did. I think it's just because he's suspended due to an accumulation of yellow cards. Now, the next sim game comes in the form of a home tie against Brighton, and I realise Brighton are a very good side. We should be playing this if we're going to optimise stuff, but we've already played Brighton in this, in this season very recently. I want to try and play as many different teams as I can. It's the usual full strength side as far as the sims are concerned. I don't think you guys really care too much about the selection of the side in sim games. You can see it's not been a great start to proceedings. Harvey Barnes getting an injury and Murphy scoring after 14 minutes. Final 10 minutes, Mackenzie on for Barnes and Lyle Taylor actually equalises. Lyle Taylor equalises to make it 1-1. We've drawn in a sim again. How have we drawn against Brighton? I genuinely do think this team is a lot better than we give it credit for. Like, actually, statistically. Thankfully for us, that injury for Harvey Barnes was, well, the exact same as the one that Joel Azoro got. So, again, he's only out for three days. Sim time again. This time we're away from home against Brentford. That's because I'm wanting to play Watford and Fulham at the end of the episode. And so Brentford are getting simmed. Another decent side, I can't lie to you. And they've got... Is that the Javino? That can't be the Javino. Surely that can't act. Well, he scored. If it is the Javino, then Javino has scored, and Ollie Watkins has actually doubled Brentford's lead. So it looks as if we're heading towards the scene of the crime at the moment in the shape of a loss. One of very few losses we've actually picked up all season so far. But Ollie Watkins and either the real Javinho or a fraudulent Javinho have stuck the sword in. So as you can see, we are obviously now approaching January. So there are now players that are at risk of being lost in this side. And those three players are Liam Trotter, Joe Piggott and Nzuzi Toko. So we're going to have to offer them new contracts. And you can see there's actually quite a lot of players whose contracts are expiring, including Joel Azoro, who might be a quite considerable pay rise and De Silva Lopez as well. A lot of these guys are quite expendable, like Seth Owens isn't going to get a contract renewal. Uh, Callum Kennedy's going anyway. Now, speaking of the transfer window, obviously that will be coming up in the next episode, so I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section who you think I should buy on pre-contract agreements and also who I should just sign, generally speaking. We do have a little bit of loose change flying around. We might end up selling Dean Parrott because he wants to leave, so the board might force us to sell him. Um, so we might have roughly a million to spend. I know it doesn't sound like a lot. It isn't a lot realistically, but it might be enough to bring in one. Well, it will be enough to bring in one player. So let me know down in the comment section. We will try and get something done in this transfer window. Time then to face another team fresh out of the Premier League. This is Watford, who were relegated at the start. Oh, well, sorry, at the end of season number one in this save. So we're facing them here in the championship. Now, on paper, this will probably be the most difficult opposition we face all year 
in the championship. Watford are realistically the strongest of the sides that got relegated. We have stalled a little bit with that draw against Brighton and then the loss against Brentford. We're only one point clear of the playoff places now. Still Taylor, he's got men at the back stick. It's Harvey Barnes who gets on the end of it and volleys it in. And after 10 minutes, we lead again. Harvey Barnes with the goal. And we are 1-0 up against Watford. Great play from the Silva Lopez and Lyle Taylor. Down this right-hand side, ball to the back stick for Harvey Barnes, who chests it down and volleys it in. Such an impressive episode as far as um, as far as performances have been, uh, you know, are concerned. And we're still winning. This is this is the problem. I think, unfortunately, sometimes the the problems with this game's difficulty are more ingrained than just changing the sliders. You just physically can't change them because if you change one thing and say make them better at passing they'll then be worse at decision making or if you make their shooting better they suddenly become less efficient with their dribbling and you can't even change that in a slider setting so and it's really difficult to just make them play well this is this is the problem i'm facing amrabat that's clipped really nicely into kucho brilliant save from walton and it goes in on the rebound but kucho was actually offside our goalkeeper, though, was not to know that. That's into Amrabat. Lovely pass into Kucho. Back to Amrabat again. Oh, my word. Amrabat has just completely messed up the finish. He's just air-kicked it. Wow, wow, wow. We have got away with one there. No, we won't take this one short. We'll launch it into the box. That might be a bit too close to the goalkeeper. Dale Fry, though, on the end of it, but it's over the bar. Bolger trying to slide that one through to Dozell. He has done Dozell, though. It was a bit of a tight angle. Pantillamon can just parry the ball away out for... A corner. This is Yamat. Good interception though there from Barnes. We can go again now with Andre Dozel. This is Bolger. Azoro's making a run in behind. It's Joel Azoro here. He's got men in the middle. It's Lyle Taylor and Lyle Taylor converts. Good stuff from the Montserrat Messi. And we have breathing space again. 2-0 up here against Watford. The counter-attack supreme. Bolger giving it to Azoro. Playing it across. Great first touch, actually. Really calm and composed once again to get it out of his feet there from Taylor and just with the standing shot, basically, launches it into the far corner. And we're two goals to the good. Showing him out wide here is the ex-middles for a man. Inside, though, now for Cucho. This is Andre Gray. Back into Cucho again, and it really, really should have been 2-1. Shot not even on target from Cucho there. Bolger, though, has lost it in a dangerous position. Pereira back into Andre Gray, and it's clipped over the bar from Watford. And that, then, is that. It's another relatively convincing victory. I mean, Watford did have a couple of chances towards the end. They started throwing the kitchen sink forward, as I was mentioning. But for the large majority of that game, we were pretty damn comfortable against the side we really shouldn't have been pretty damn comfortable up against. So, the man of the match in that one was Lyle Taylor, 9.2 for him. Harvey Barnes with an 8.9. Azoro and Florence, also impressive. Same for Liam Trotter, actually, as well. Really liked him and Bolger in that central midfield position. It's now the time for the final simmed game of today's video. There'll only be one played game after this one. And we're away from home against Scunthorpe United. Now, usually for Sims, I would play the absolute strongest side. We can't do that because this game is only three days after that win against Watford. So there's a couple of really tired legs out there. Scunthorpe got promoted with us, didn't they? I think they won the playoffs um, because obviously Blackburn won the league. We came second, so I imagine Scunthorpe United won at the playoffs. They're actually winning this game as well. Wallace with a goal from defence just three minutes into the second half. But Rory McKenzie, or Rory McKenzie, there we go, and no late goals in that one, and it does end one goal apiece. So here we are, final game of the episode. This has been a mammoth recording. I've been going for two hours already, but we are here. And uh, we find ourselves with Darius Charles' flashing hair in the background up against Fulham. Once again, we're back at Plough Lane then, this time to face Fulham, who obviously got promoted in the playoffs in real life. So once again, another side that should not be underestimated whatsoever in this game. They're currently 11th though in the league in this save, so not quite the same fortunes. I'm gonna switch the play. Can De Silva Lopez deal with it? It's fallen out to Wu Lai. That's a great ball through to Forrest off the post. Can we get rid of it on the rebound? Harvey Barnes does indeed. 
We are lucky to not be behind there. Parrot's looking for a little bit of a counter-attack here. Through to Joel Azora, who's in acres of space. It's Joel Azora overran it slightly. Harvey Barnes going for the chip, but it'll go straight into the hands of Button. Now into De La Torre. Good turn there from McDonald to get away from Fuller, but a save at the near post is from Walton. Not overly sure if it was going in, but Walton doesn't know that realistically. Into the danger zone. McDonald gets his head on it. What a save that is from Walton. And then Forrest on the rebound from a surely impossible angle. Angle, finds the side netting. Injured Dean Parrott is off then. Shame for him because I'm trying to get him some more game time that he's now injured, but McTominay, the Manchester United loanee, comes in to replace him. Azoro, Lyle Taylor. Still Lyle Taylor. This is great work from him trying to get the ball over there to De Silva Lopez who goes for the chip and it's cleared off the line by Reem. Good work from Button to get a hand to it. Oh, that's a good ball through there. This is Wu Lai again in danger here. And Walton again with a near post save. He has been very, very good. Dozel turns and finds Joel Azoro out wide to Morgan Shaw. Good run being made here by Lyle Taylor. Great ball to pick him out. It's Lyle Taylor and it's saved. I think a combination of Marcelo and a goalkeeper there as Taylor cut back inside. Really nice ball from our Youth Academy product there in the shape of Morgan Shaw. Morgan Shaw. Oh, that's a really poor ball. Dozello sweep, sweeps it up here. And this now is Lyle Taylor in some space. What a finish with six seconds of normal time to go. Lyle Taylor has surely won us the game. Unbelievable from the Montserrat Messi. What a finish that is. Dorsell into Azoro. Taylor, it's not a full chance realistically. He's blasted across the goalkeeper. And Lyle Taylor, right at the death, has surely got us the three points here. That is absolutely unreal. And now we need to hold on for the final literal couple of minutes here. Fulham are going to charge absolutely everybody forward in the pursuit of an equaliser. That is the final action of the game. It is a victory right at the death. It didn't look as if it was going to be, but one goal was all it takes. Your man of the match is Osho Larger, despite the winning goal from Taylor. I think he's uh, got a very good chance of, uh, of reclaiming that player of the episode after today. He will have some big challenges though. The likes of Taylor, the likes of Azoro. Dozel once again was absolutely phenomenal running that game from the number 10 position. Impressed again as well with Barry Fuller. It's not all good news. Dean Parrott unfortunately will be out for three weeks with a sprained knee. This though is how the table is looking after today's episode. As you can see, we are two points clear at the moment of Aston Villa, but it's far from being completely done realistically isn't it there's a lot of teams still within touching distance only three points between first and fourth so but that is going to do it for today's episode of the Wimbledon a road to glory here on FIFA 18 career mode it has been an incredible episode in fairness with some brilliant goals that Joe Piggott back heel may well go down in history on this channel some late drama some really nice goals just generally speaking and some really excellent performances as well I am again striving to try and make this series a bit more difficult because we keep coming up against sides that are underestimating us but unfortunately it's a fundamental part of the of the AI on this game and nevertheless if you have enjoyed this video regardless slap a like on it and of course subscribe if you are new to the channel it's the big red button under the video and it really really helps me out if you go ahead and do that striving for, uh, for 60k subscribers sorry in the near future don't forget as well to leave your suggestions for players to buy in the next episode down in the comment section because we'll be in to the transfer window very soon. Apart from that though, it has been an absolute pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. Yo, I roll out with some monsters, looks like your team and you watches. I do no roll with imposters, tied by the man in the Oscars. I'm drunk of Henry and Foster's. I have a career, I am jobless. This bitch have me so hard, I might just end up unconscious. I like girls in lingerie, especially if it is crushes. Bitch, I am the bigger picture. There is no way you can crop us.